Today I will show you how easy it is to work smarter and not harder by simply using some accessories you will see how fast we can groom the Shih Tzu. Hello everybody, this is Kitty for Kitty Talks Dogs. Today we have with us Nina and Nina is a three-year-old chocolate brown Shih Tzu, a very fun dog with a very nice coat, a very like soft, it's a bit curly. At the end I have a surprise. I'm gonna doll Nina up a little bit. So if you are wondering what we're gonna do, keep on watching. All the products I'm using in this video you can see in the link below. Cleaning the eyes and the ears. Here we are going to use, first of all, the powder. The powder is going to make sure we have some grip when we take the hair. While we also use the finger condoms with the powder, the hair is going to come right out and it's going to be very easy to pull out the hairs. Not only inside the ear, but also a little bit outside the ear. I like to pluck the hair away. This way the ear is aerated and the air can go everywhere. This way it's easy to maintain. Here you see me using the tweezers afterwards for the deep hairs inside to be able to, if possible, take them out as well. And now I'm using the ear care. I like to really put a lot of ear care in until you, you see the ear filling up with the liquid and then giving a little massage. In a few seconds all the dirt and the grease will dissolve and then it's very easy to clean out the ears. Here you see me cleaning the ear forceps. I like to use the ear care very much for cleaning the ear tweezers. For the eyes my favorite little comb is the eye comb together with the ear wipes. Just with the small comb you can get all the dirt out and then it's very easy with the eye wipes you can clean around the eyes and as well you can use the eye wipes to clean out your comb. Let's do some clipping. For the pads here I'm using the Heinegger style midi. It's very easy I just go around the pads and I make sure that the lines are well done at the back of the pad from there to there and then afterwards for scissoring the feet you can just follow around the line and you don't have any more hairs sticking out. With soft coated breeds like the Shih Tzu or Maltese I really always like to clean out the pads because sometimes the hair is so soft it gets knotted and then it's like a stone is stuck between the two pads and it's very uncomfortable. And the more hair there is between the pads from this kind of breed, maybe sometimes there's a small stone or some dirt, you know, sticking into the hairs and then it's very uncomfortable. So in these kinds of breeds I really like the pads to be really cleaned out and all the hair in between the pads gone. It's very easy just Take your machine and scoop out this way and when you're finished scoop out the other way and then everything is clean and it's very easy afterwards to make the feet with the scissors round. If I'm clipping nails I prefer to put all my products in advance ready. You never know. I like to really cut the nails short. That means just against to the vine and sometimes I go a little bit too far and it's like a little bit of blood but immediately with the stop bleed you just push it and it stops bleeding. I like to have my stop bleed always with me. You can use the nail grinder with or without the cap but with long hairs I always use it with the cap because the nail grinder is grinding, it's turning around and some hair might be turning around and st stuck suddenly. So I prefer the nail grinder with the cap with long hair breeds like Nina. Let's do some washing. 
Today I'm very happy to use the Hydro Shampoo and from the left to the right you see the Mixing Bottle, the Extreme Shampoo, the Moisturing Shampoo, the Thermal Active Deep Conditioner. The Mixing Bottles are very easy to use. You just put the water in until the water line and then you add the shampoo until the shampoo line and on the bottle it says 1 to 4 for the extreme shampoo and it says 1 to 10 for the moisturizing shampoo. Nina's watching the shampoo and saying oh no I'm gonna have a bath. <laughs> so don't forget to shake the shampoo and just wet the dog thoroughly. So now I'm washing with the extreme shampoo this is a deep cleaning shampoo for the first bath. It's very easy, it's a very good shampoo that will deep clean the coat, the skin. It will dissolve all the grease, all the dirt. And here you see me massaging the head. I like to do the head the last, so I'm fresh, especially for dogs like Shih Tzu's with the short nose. You never know, there might be some shampoo going into the eyes. And of course we do anything to avoid this, but when you do the head the last, first thing you do is after you've done the head is rinsing. So that's why I like to do the head the last. I am putting on the moist shampoo. And the moist shampoo is specially for the soft and long coated breeds. As you can see here, the leather is even thicker. This is because the second shampoo, look at the leather. The second shampoo is when all the dirt is already gone and the second time you wash it's like even a stronger leather. So don't forget between the toes, the tummy, between the pads and the last, the head. Slowly massaging under the eyes, between the eyes, his beard or her beard. I like to hold the shower on top of the head so it doesn't splash or spray very much and still the water is running down and then slowly we can like rinse and massage all the shampoo away from around eyes. Especially because the Shih Tzu is very sensitive because it has a short nose and it's always afraid the water will go into the nose. So be careful that the water doesn't go into the nose and if the water is also the right temperature, don't worry about the eyes. It's better to have some water into the eyes than to have product in the eyes. So I never worry about the, the water because it's also very, very good temperature, but I am always worried about the product. Mm -hmm. Now let's use some conditioners. So here you see me using the thermal active conditioner. This is a very good conditioner. It only needs 90 seconds and you can just undiluted, put it in your hands, rub your hands together and put it on the coat. So after 90 seconds you can rinse out the thermal active conditioner. When you are washing you feel it being slippy and as soon as all the shampoo is out you will feel like a squeaky feeling. The thermal active conditioner has a protecting product inside. It protects the hair against the heat. So when you are using the curling wand or the straightener, don't worry, the hair is protected. It also makes sure the drying process is quicker and the hair is very easy to handle. Drying Nina. Nina is very afraid of the dryers. And actually, we say the dryer, but it's not actually the dryer, it's the noise because the air is so concentrated in that little hole and all the hair comes out and once it hits the dog's skin it goes, whoosh, you know, very much noise and when you put the ear buddy on you will see that Nina is much more at ease. The ear buddy doesn't only cancel out the noise but the ear buddy has the compression and the dogs feel like very much before when they were in the womb the compression between the other puppies and that makes the dogs relax. I like to use the towel because I think it wins time when I am blastering all the water goes out and when I, you, I, when I use the towel all the water goes into my towel. When you are using the blaster 
and the blaster end nozzle is like round because the motor is like turning the air around sometimes the air comes out and turns the hair around as well in long coats that's why i like the flat nozzle here you see me using and this will never turn the hair around for drying with the blaster i like to go really close to the coat and I go about five centimeters from the coat and I go all the way through and I stay there until the hair is quite dry. And now let's do some brushing. On one of the other videos there was a question about why do we take the curls out? It's very simple. A curly hair is shorter because it's going like this and then it's that. And whatever we do, it stays like this until it's wet and then dry again and then it curls in a different way. A straight hair, because it's straight and you comb and then you scissor, it will always stay straight. It will always stay the same length. When you have to scissor curly hair, because it's going like this and like this, when you scissor it and then you comb it, you will always not have a good finish because the curls will be more curly or less curly or curl differently. And then at the top where you scissored will always be different and you will never, never have an even finish. I like to go against the direction with the warm air and here you see me showing the line that means that all the curls are gone and yet you see that the line is very straight and now you see the line was very curly it was like zigzag and that's because that place was not finished yet here you see me twisting out like doing this so the dog is like turning around his elbow so it's easy for drying the back of the front legs. And now you see me doing the back legs and I'm also going against the direction. And here I'm showing you how I'm holding like the knee and the dog is stretching his leg. This is a quick check. I'm just combing through with the scissoring comb to see if all the way I've done the part of the drying and the brushing correctly and as you can see I'm just going with the comb very easy through the coat. I'm very happy to use the new Heinegger Opel clipper today. This is a brilliant clipper with a lot of performance and it's very quiet in use and it fits fantastically in our hands. Because it's commercial and we need to work fast, I am using the new Heinegger attachment combs and I'm using the 16 mm You don't have to think about the lines because always when you use the attachment combs, it's everywhere the same length. I'm going against direction because I don't want to go a lot over the coat if you go with direction. Of course, it's longer when you go against direction. It's always shorter because you're going against direction. It's cleaner and it's faster. It's very easy. Just go against the hair growth. That means at the sides, don't go horizontally, but look very closely. If the hair goes like sideways, go against also sideways and don't go horizontal. And I don't know if you see it, but with Nina, she has like hair growing that way. There, we must also go against that way and like go with the curls. Also the sides and now the tummy. I'm also using the 16 millimeter. And then for between the nipples, I'm using the six millimeter. But as you can see, when I'm going to more to the sides, I'm only using one side and I'm not using the whole clipper because maybe then I would make lines. So I'm only using like one side. Also very nicely, always against the direction of the coat growth. So here you see me on the other side also only using one side to not have any lines. And now I'm using the 10 blades for the anus and the other parts inside the back legs also with the number 10 blade. I like to 
at the nipples go very tight and close because I'm always afraid when I see a bit of hair I might cut it with the scissors but when around the nipples it's nice and clean with the clipper I will not be tempted to go scissoring around the nipples so there is no risk then. At the chest around here you have certain parts of the hair who grow up and certain parts who grow down. You just have to look very closely and make sure when you are clipping against the direction of the coat that you watch carefully how the hair grows and clip against the coat. A place where the hair grows circle in a circle is here. So just follow the circle and keep clipping against direction. Here at the chest you see the hair growing up, so I'm going downwards with the clipper. Here we go with the 19 millimeters. Here I'm showing how easy it is to hook on the attachment comb to the 30 blade and just use the 19 millimeter blade on the long hair on the feet and the legs. After this it will be easy for scissoring. Just follow the direction of the growth of the hair now and go all the way around the legs, the outside, the inside. Let's do some scissoring. I'm excited to use the Ergoline Special Blender. When the scissor is closed, it looks like a normal scissor, but when you open it, you will see it's a blender. Here you see me using the curved six and a half inch sparkle scissor. I like to do the front of the feet first of all, very short, and then the back also very short, and then the sides, leave them open a bit, don't go too short because maybe it's going to look too triangle. So make it as round as possible. It's very easy with the sparkle to go around and to go between. Just do some combing and do it again with the sparkle scissor. Just comb again and scissor and comb again and scissor again. And here we go with the special blender. Here you see me with my left hand lifting up the hairs, making sure it's all even. Comb and scissor and comb until it's all natural. Pulling to the front and then scissoring. That way, also between the front legs, it'll be nice, neat and short. Here in slow motion you can see how I'm lifting up the hair and scissoring the points which are sticking out. And here again you see after combing how natural the finish is. You don't see any lines. Here I'm lifting up the front legs to make sure it's all natural and there's no hair sticking out. And here now at the tail I'm just combing and scissoring and combing and scissoring and repeat again. Now you see me like twisting his elbow to the outside so I can easily cut also the inside of the front legs. Here I'm just trying to make sure the front legs are straight. It means that I don't like front, front legs that look like a banana, that go like and then out. I like them straight, especially from the chest to the front of the front legs. If the hair is growing that way, you can go with the direction or against the direction, but don't go sideways. That's where you might have scissor marks or shorter places. Here in slow motion you can see the little hairs flying off. Also with the comb you can see I'm going against the direction but here I'm combing with direction and I'm still holding the comb up and you see all the hairs that need to come out. You just see the points where there's too much hair very easily. So you don't need to keep to one technique, you can use all the techniques together. As long as you have a natural finish, it's good. Here I'm at the back. I'm just making sure the whole body is straight and then I will do the head and then at last I will do the back legs. So now we're back at the front leg. 
that means I'm quite happy with the way the body is looking and now we can just finish the front legs totally. I'm always having my comb very close and just combing and scissoring, combing and scissoring and repeat. Here from the side you see how straight I'm trying to make the legs look. So sometimes it's very good to lift up one leg to work on the other leg because the dog is on three legs and he's like forced to stand still. Nina doesn't like the front legs to be touched so that's why I it's easy to lift up one leg and to work on the other leg. Again combing. So I like to comb until I'm totally happy and nothing comes out anymore. And here you see me starting the face and I'm clipping between the lips just under the nose and a little bit the under lip and that means that there's no more dirty hair here and it's really fun then just to go around with the scissors. It's clean and you don't need to fiddle around anymore with your scissors. And now it's easy to do the beard and everything around the lips and the nose. I like to actually scissor everything that comes out of the profile of the nose. At the same length of the nose I clip everything very short. And here you see the nose now. And here I've now combed everything backwards and I just went in between with my scissor just at the length of the eyes. Again combing everything up and just going the whole circle and cleaning out all the hair that is sticking up. This way the hair around the eyes is very short and it's very easy for maintenance. So now I'm holding up the ears. I'm just going around the face and just making the face as round as possible. And I'm holding up the ears so I'm not in danger there of clipping or scissoring in the ears. And now we're at the back of the head. And I'm just scissoring with the direction of the growth of the hair. And I'm just making it very short. And here I'm going against the direction of the growth. And I'm making sure when you see the neck that there's no hairs sticking out. So it's nice and one even part. You have the head and then after the head you have the neck. And in between there's no hair sticking out. And now the other side as well, the same. You can also lift the hair and scissor on top of the comb. The ears of Nina have to stay long because that's the request of the owner. So we respect that and we keep the ears as long as possible. Here at the back legs, we've just done the pads, just following the way we have shaved, making at the front and the back of the feet that it's short. And once we have that, we can make them as round as possible. I always like to shave at the back of the pad, so afterwards with the scissor you just comb everything down and then one time you do that with the scissor you pass by and it's all clean. Same here at the other side just comb everything down and just make the foot as round as possible. And now we're combing everything up so it's easy to see where to scissor and now we're combing everything sidewards and down and up and just scissoring around until it's all even. You see me going quite short. It's actually where the dog's back leg is folding that I'm going short to make some angulation. And once the back part is done, then I can like move more forwards. When I do the back legs, I always do the back part of the back legs first and then I move over to the front part of the back legs. And for the inside, I like to hold up his other leg so it's easy for me to do the inside of the leg. And Nina has a very easy coat. If the coat is not standing up while you are scissoring, you can use the quick fix spray or another spray or even water. And then you spray a little bit 
you comb and the hair will stand up better so you can easy scissor it. But now with Nina, because she has such a good coat, she's washed very well and she had a good conditioner, it's not really necessary to do anything. Here you see me again going as short as possible where like the back leg is folding here and I'm gonna scissor as much as it is necessary to have each single hair which is sticking out. If it's necessary to repeat, just you know, keep on repeating until you're happy with the result. Here we twisted the hair on the tail and just clipped it off. And now we are just going to comb the hair sideways and just style it a little bit on a curl. Last back leg. See me here going very quickly. <laughs> I wish I could do that, but it's actually the video which is a bit fast forward. Here you see me combing, combing at the back and scissoring. Okay, there was a little hair still at not far away from the nipple, which was bothering me, so I have to have all the hairs around there very clean. So that's why I lifted Nina up again and went back around the nipples and I need it to be clean, so here again I'm combing everything upwards and just going over and over and over again. There you will see me go short. Exactly there, yes, I'm showing it now. That's the shortest part, so you see the angulation correctly, yes. So you don't see any lines between where we've clipped with the clipper, with the attachment combs or the legs. Everything is clean. Here you can see the nice rounding of the leg and you saw some hair sticking out. So that's exactly where I'm trying to scissor them off now. And now we're ready to do some curls. So I'm sectioning off the different parts and I'm using some style spray because the curlers are quite hot, it's better you are with two. You never know when they move. Just hold the curling wand, count to 30 maybe, and after 30 seconds, slowly let go, and we have the curls. And again, two sprays, a few brushes, and now we're curling the other way other direction and here we go next and we are holding the finger against the skin because we don't want to you know touch the dog's ear with the curling wand so each time I'm holding the skin and here we go curly Nina it's very fun it's very easy to do but I wouldn't do it alone Unless you'd say you'll only do the points and you won't go anywhere near the skin. But you can use the curlers on any parts of the long hair of the dog. Here again I was dividing the different parts of the ear. And then starting with one, curling up. And if you want the curls to last very long, as soon as you let them go, you need to use the spray again. But we didn't do this in this video. And if you want smaller parts, the only thing you need to do is take less hair and you'll have finer, smaller curls. And at the end, when you have a wide curl, you can also divide them in two or three different parts. Here we go, we just divide it in three parts. And here we go again. And now a bow tie. The bow ties are very, very easy. You can adjust the size first and you just glide them into the lock to lock them. Here you see a finished Nina. We did Nina in a commercial way, a quick way, and it's actually working smarter and not harder with the help of the Heinegger Opal Clipper and the attachment combs where we save time by using the clippers and not too much the scissors. And here you see the before and the after pictures
from Nina. This was Kitty for Transgrim TV. Thank you very much for listening. All the products I have been using in this video, I have a link down below. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to write them also down below. Please subscribe and see you next time. Thank you.